dan selamat sejahtera kepada anda semua yang sedang menyaksikan Road to Success SPM 2020 bersama saya hos anda Wani Carey. Baiklah seperti biasa yang kita akan ingatkan anda semua yang sedang menonton untuk sentiasa menjaga SOP. Bagaimana? Sentiasa cuci tangan, pakai hand sanitizer, pakai pelitup muka apabila anda berada di luar dan yang paling penting jaga jarak sekurang-kurangnya 1 meter apabila berada di tempat awam ataupun di tempat yang sesak. Baiklah pelajar semua, untuk hari ini kita akan belajar lebih lanjut mengenai teknik menjawab kertas bahasa Inggeris satu. Tapi dengan siapa? Ha, semestinya dengan guru jemputan khas kita yang akan kita bawa selepas ini. Tapi kita nak tahu dululah kertas Inggeris ni kan? Hmm... Bagi Wani sendiri, kertasnya adalah satu kertas kegemaran Wani. Sebab apa? Kita dapat menulis cerita yang best-best lah orang kata. Ini sebenarnya kertas yang agak senang untuk skor kalau kita tahu menggunakan bahasa yang betul. Tapi jangan risau, mungkin ada yang masih, walaupun dah nak dekat exam ni, ada yang masih, alamak tak tahulah macam mana dapat skor A atau A plus ni. Jangan risau, oleh sebab itu kita nak saksikan dulu profil yang disediakan untuk anda semua. Jom kita tengok dulu. If you believe, you can achieve. Itulah di antara moto Cikgu Sharali. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Hello, Wani. How Hello. are you doing, teacher? Fine, thank you. Okay, teacher looking great today. Thank you so okay, much. Okay, kepada pelajar semua, inilah dia guru kita untuk kertas bahasa Inggeris satu hari ini. Alright, teacher. So, before we start, maybe teacher can share with the students about English paper one. What are the most difficult things that students are always face during exam or during their um, classes daily? Okay, their most uh, uh, difficult thing for them to do is mm -hmm. always putting their ideas into sentences. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you know paper one is essay writing, yes. uh, so you need to be confident in writing, mm -hmm. getting your vocabulary correct and your grammar correct. Mm -hmm. So they are always fearful of grammar especially. Grammar. And mm -hmm. then they have good ideas but sometimes they don't know how to put it in good sentences. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, okay. In your opinion, teacher, For paper one and paper two, which one is the most difficult to score? I think it's paper one. Essay. Essay writing. Essay <laughs> okay. writing. Alright, yeah. so that is teacher's opinion. Apa kata kita dengarkan dulu pandangan pelajar tentang subjek kertas satu bahasa Inggeris ini? Jom. Untuk bahasa Inggeris, saya lebih meminati untuk menjawab soalan kertas satu iaitu soalan section A, Director Writing. Soalan untuk Director director Writing ni, kita kena faham soalan dan faham format untuk menjawab dia. Sama ada soalan ni diminta informal letter ataupun formal letter, artikel atau talk ataupun report kepada principal ataupun kepada society ataupun kepada polis. So, kertas satu lebih mudah untuk saya jawab daripada kertas dua. Bahasa Inggeris ni senang je. Tambah-tambah lagi kalau kita ada vocab yang banyak. Sebab sebab bahasa Inggeris ni banyak kita untuk buat karangan. Dan kalau saya, saya suka dia dah tahu jalan cerita dia. Kita akan mudah untuk menjawab soalan. Kalau dia tanya tentang nilai murni ataupun pengajaran. Saya suka bahasa Inggeris kerana bahasa Inggeris merupakan subjek yang sangat mudah difahami dan dapat bantu pelajar untuk skor dalam SPM. Okay, sebab bahasa Inggeris ni uh, bahasa yang kita guna pakai dalam kehidupan seharian. Antara tips yang telah saya pelajari ialah semasa membuat esei dalam kertas satu, kita disarankan untuk gunakan sekurang-kurangnya 5 bombas keyword. Selain itu, untuk lagi cantikkan esei kita, Tambahkanlah beberapa proverb. Anyway, good luck SPM Canteen. Itulah 
ada pandangan para pelajar mengenai kertas Inggeris, kertas satu ini. Okey, jadi Wan ni dah boleh nampak sikit lah. Pelajar sebenarnya suka untuk tulis esei ni. Cuma ni mereka tak tahu macam mana nak gunakan grammar ataupun vocab yang betul. Oleh sebab itu, kita akan bersama dengan Cikgu Sharili sebentar je lagi. So, for now, teacher, I would like to give you a break to get ready everything for you to teach all the students out there. Jadi, anda jangan ke mana-mana. Kita jumpa selepas ini dalam Road to Success SPM 2020. Bertemu kembali dalam Road to Success SPM 2020 bersama saya Wani Carey. Baiklah, sebelum kita mulakan Wani nak ingatkan untuk sentiasa jaga SOP bagaimana sentiasa cuci tangan, pakai hand sanitizer, pakai pelitup muka ataupun face mask dan paling penting jaga jarak sekurang-kurangnya 1 meter apabila anda berada di tempat awam. Alright teacher, so today we are not only two person in the studio because we will have students with us today which is your student from yeah. SMK Batu Unjo Kelang. Hello everyone. How are you? Okay. Fine, thank you. Okay, can I unmute your mic to say hi? <laughs> Hello. Okay. Hi. Hello. Hi. All right, hi. teacher. Okay, so these are all uh, the students from your class, is it, teacher? Uh, Iqbal is from another class. The rest oh, are from my Iqbal class. Iqbal Han from other class. Okay, another so class. here we have Davindran, Dasvindran. Dasvindran. We have Melissa, Sa, Iqbal, yes. or maybe teacher can introduce them. Uh, uh, let me start with Dasvindran. Uh -huh. Dasvindran there, mm -hmm. Melissa, Iqbal, Noshini, mm -hmm. Sharwin, and Michelle Sakura. Michelle Sakura? Yes. Wow, uh, great her, name. <laughs> her mom is Japanese. <laughs> all right, okay. All students today, if you have any question, you can interact with us, all right? Don't be shy, okay? Because uh, this is your chance to ask many questions as you can to uh, to get good marks in English Paper 1, all right? Okay, so teacher, if you are ready, we can start now, teacher. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, today I will be talking about the English Paper 1 for SPM 2020. Okay, what I'm trying to do today would be just to give you a rough idea uh, how to elaborate points, especially in directed writing, and also how to put your ideas into sentences for continuous writing. All right? Okay. It's me. Okay. Let's look at directed writing first. As you know, directed writing, you have to finish it within 45 minutes. Okay? It comes with format. Now, what are the formats usually asked? You have formal letter, informal letter, you have speech or talk, report and article. Uh, please remember, uh, speech and talk is the same thing. The format is the same. Mm -hmm. uh, don't uh, read the question and if you see talk, don't go and write dialogue there, okay? It's still a speech, mm -hmm. okay? So these are the formats. Okay, now let's look at an analysis of directed writing uh, questions which has come out from 2014 to 2018. Okay, 2014 we have article, uh, 2015 speech came out, 2016 talk came out mm -hmm. and 2017 report 2018 report and 2019 again article, article. came out. Okay, mm -hmm. now if you look here, uh, you are only looking at article, report and speech or talk, I see. Mm -hmm. So, what you can do is prepare, know these formats very well and also for letter. Mm -hmm. Letter don't simply cover informal letter, cover formal letter also. Now, if you're struggling to understand what is formal letter, Your textbook, you know the blue color textbook? Mm -hmm. I think page 64 or 65, you have a really good format for formal letter. You can have a look at it. Okay, now let's look at the question for director writing, which came out in SPM 2011. Okay, uh, can I ask somebody to read this question for me? Okay, who one can student can read the question. Okay, who, who wants to volunteer? Or we have to choose. Okay. okay. Iqbal. Iqbal. Okay. okay. Iqbal, read. Oh, Iqbal, please unmute your mic. <laughs> All right. Sorry. You attended a workshop organized by the state's Red Crescent Society on how to manage a sprained ankle. 
your teacher advisor has asked you to give a talk to the Red Crescent Society members in how in your school to upgrade the skills in giving first aid treatment. Okay, very good. Now that you have read the question, mm -hmm. what is the next step to do? You can tell me. Hmm. What is the next step? What is maybe, the next step after maybe we you have can read ask the question? Sherwin? Yes? Sherwin, what is the next step? Well, the next step is to underline the keywords. Okay, very uh -huh. good. You have to underline keywords. So, who can tell me what are the keywords here? Okay. I would like to try, teacher. Okay, go ahead. Michelle. How to manage a sprained ankle and a talk. Okay. How to manage a sprained ankle, ankle. and a talk. Very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is the, uh, those are the keywords. Let's go on. Okay, this is the second part of the question. Mm -hmm. where you will see the notes given for you to elaborate and also write the sentences out. Okay, now if you see here, you have 12 points to elaborate and write your sentences. Okay, mm -hmm. so you must make sure all the 12 points you have written into sentences. Mm -hmm. Don't leave out even one. Okay, each one carries one mark. Okay, so let's go on. Okay, this is the final part of the question where it says, greet your audience, mention the purpose of the talk, include all the points given and your talk appropriately. Now, this is the part of the question where usually the students are not reading. Mm -hmm. They straight, <laughs> after the notes, they straight talk. They, uh, they start immediately. Yeah. When they say, oh, it's a talk, I know what to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, But this is actually the most important part of the question where it reminds you of the format actually okay, okay now i've highlighted greet purpose and your talk okay now these three words are talking about what who can tell me okay ah, yes, that's ah. Ah, yes they refer to the format of speech for talk teacher Okay, they are referring to the format for the talk. Mm -hmm. So, in case in the examination hall, you know, you are all jumbled up, you are yeah, nervous, nervous, and you don't know uh, whether you should sign or not, <laughs> what is uh, going on there. Yeah. So, this is the part of the question where you can actually find out what's the format actually. Mm -hmm. All right? So, you don't have to worry. Okay, now let's go on. We are going to talk about introduction. Paragraph 1 for the talk. Mm -hmm. Okay, now if you look here, we have three versions of how to say good morning and how to say how to manage a sprained ankle. Remember, you must greet first. Yeah. So we have good morning. I'm going to talk about how to manage a sprained ankle. Mm -hmm. So the one the words I've highlighted in green, good morning would be the greeting. How to manage a sprained ankle would be the format, format. for purpose. purpose. Okay? okay. So now, let's see. This will be uh, one mark for format, mm -hmm. and this will be another one mark for format as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So now, if you are not very confi confident of writing out sentences, you can always write out the first version, which is "Good morning." Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about how to manage a sprained ankle. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure you can manage to write good morning. How to manage a sprained ankle, I have actually taken it from the question itself. Yes. All right? Mm -hmm. Or if you feel confident, you can go to the second version. Good morning, teachers and friends. Today, I would like to talk on how to manage a sprained ankle. I've mm -hmm. just added a little bit. Earlier, you just say good morning and it's full stop. But now here... I've added teachers and friends, mm -hmm. all right, okay? And I've changed this a bit to today I would like to talk on. Okay, mm -hmm. now it's just an extra addition. Now you decide which version you're comfortable with. You can either write this or this. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's look at the third version. Can somebody read this? Okay. Who can this? Iqbal. Iqbal, okay. Uh, a very good morning to Madam Kanga Devi, our teacher advisor, and all the Red Crescent Society members. Last week, I attended a workshop organized by the Red Crescent Society of Selangor. The workshop was on how to manage a sprained ankle. Today, I would like to share the information and knowledge gained so that we can all upgrade our skills in giving first aid treatment. Okay, thank you. Now, notice here, the words in green, the good morning is still there, 
-hmm. How to manage a sprained ankle is also there. So you get your format marks, one and two here. But mm -hmm. I've added extra information. Now, if you are if you are planning to get more marks for language, mm -hmm. you need to write a little bit more. Oh, okay. Okay, so it helps later in getting your language mark. Okay. All so right. what are the information I've added? I've put in the teacher advisor there, mm -hmm. Red Crescent Society. I'm sure you have a teacher advisor. In this case, I put the, in the name and who is she mm -hmm. and addressing who. And then I've given a sort of a context for you to write a situation where, for example, here I've said last week mm -hmm. I attended a workshop organized by the Red Crescent Society of Slango. Now this one, the workshop was on how to manage a sprained ankle. Okay, now this part I've added today, I would like to share the information and knowledge mm -hmm. again so that we can all upgrade our skills in giving first aid treatment. Now actually, all of you can write this actually because most of these words here I have actually taken from the question. Mm -hmm. Okay, now who can tell me which part here I've taken from the question? Anybody? Melissa. Okay, Melissa. Okay. You attended a workshop organized by the State Street Crescent Society on how to manage a sprained ankle. The word you has been replaced with I. Okay. Oh, later we'll see this. Any more? Anything else I've lifted from the question? Can I try, teacher? Okay. Okay, who is that? Who's Nushini. That? Okay. Ah, Nushini, okay. Upgrade their skills in giving first aid treatment. The word there has changed to we. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's go back to the question. Notice? What did they say? Okay, now this one is you. the one I've changed to I. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I have changed here. I've taken this as well and I've changed this to our skills. Our. So, what I'm trying to say here is utilize the question. The information in the question itself can give you two or three correct sentences. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, so you see, actually you don't really have to think much. Mm -hmm. You put in your teacher's name and you take it from the question. Mm -hmm. Okay. And teacher, the longer the sentence will uh, give you more marks, is it? Uh, actually, I think we cannot say the longer the sentence because mm -hmm. it must make sense. For Sometimes uh, you want to write longer sentences but if you're halfway through you get it wrong, mm -hmm. also it doesn't uh, you know, work. You can't yeah, get the mask. Okay. 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 Now here, I've taken one set of notes to explain how you can elaborate. All right. Okay. I've taken these notes. Eh? Apply ice, 20 minutes, reduce swelling. Okay. Now, I have three versions here too. Let's look at the first one. You must apply ice. You must apply ice for 20 minutes. It will reduce swelling. Okay. What I've highlighted in blue are the notes here. So, you have three points here. This is one, two, this is three. Mm -hmm. So, you have three marks for your content. All right. So, let's look at the first version. Notice, I just put there, you must apply ice. Because this talk is about how to treat a sprained ankle. Mm -hmm. So, what is happening is you're giving advice. Yeah. What to do in that case. So, you can say you must. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you're not confident of English, you just write you must apply ice and you have one correct sen sentence there. Yeah. And notice I have actually repeated that sentence. Yes. So, you must apply ice for 20, 20 minutes. minutes. So, you have two beautiful sentences there. It will reduce swelling. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you can do this way. Very yeah. simple. Okay. Then, let's look at the second version. Then, you must apply ice. Mm -hmm. All right. You can apply ice for 20 minutes. I've just changed it a bit. Ice can reduce swelling. Yeah. Okay. So, mm -hmm. because they have already mentioned ice, you just use it back. Mm -hmm. okay. So, if you work smart, I think you can write this way. Now, if you are going uh, like uh, a little bit more marks, mm -hmm. like earlier, you can elaborate this more. Okay. Can somebody read this for me? Okay. 
Okay. Yes, sir. A sprained ankle will be swollen. We need to apply ice to the sprained ankle for 20 minutes. This will help to reduce the swelling. We also need to ensure the person is comfortable. Okay, thank you. Now, notice I've added some information here. What mm. I've added, a sprained ankle will be swollen. Okay, definitely because you're going to reduce the swelling. Yes. So if you backtrack, you know that the sprained ankle will be swollen. Uh, we need to apply ice to the sprained ankle for 20 minutes. So I've got two points in one sentence here. Yeah. Okay, then what, was, what will this do? This will help to reduce the swelling. Mm. Okay. We also need to ensure the person is comfortable. You can, this is added information. Yeah. So when you add on information to your points, your marks for language is better. Okay. All right. But mm -hmm. if you are going into the hall, you know, you are very scared. Oh yeah. my God, I don't know how to write the sentences. <laughs> you can go for the first, first version. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Okay. Simple but still correct. Still mm -hmm. correct. Okay. And you still get the marks for content. Yeah. All right. Okay, we have come to the closure or ending of the talk now. Okay. Now here, this is one mark for format. Format, okay. Okay, so talk has three marks for format. Mm -hmm. You have the greeting, you have the purpose of the talk, and also the ending. Okay, mm -hmm. let's look at the ending. How can you write? Very simple. Thank you. Mm. And you got your mark. Yeah. All right. So, or you can write like this. Thank you for lending me your years. All right. Now, notice mm -hmm. we have two years. So, your years here must be plural. Yeah, okay. okay? So, if you just put that year... I think uh, it will be an error later. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Now, next one. Thank you for listening to my speech. Also fine. Good. Okay. Now, can somebody read this one? Okay. Last one. Iqbal. Yeah. Okay, Iqbal. I will end my talk here. Treating a sprained ankle is not difficult. We will have practice sessions to train you on treating a sprained ankle later. Thank you. Okay. Very good, Iqbal. Okay. Notice. Like before, I've added information mm -hmm. uh, yes. because I want more marks for language. True. Okay, so what, have I, what am I saying here? I will end my talk here. You see, before the thank you, I've, I am saying other things first. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I'm telling my audience, I'm ending my speech. Okay, I will end my talk here. Treating a sprained ankle is not difficult. So your audience is the Red Crescent Society members. Yeah. So maybe they are a bit worried now. Oh my God, how am I going to treat? You know, they are a bit worried. So mm -hmm. you are like motivating them. It's not so bad, okay? So treating a sprained ankle is not difficult. We will have practice sessions to train you on tra treating a sprained ankle later. Mm -hmm. So you are giving added information again. Then only you are ending with a thank you. Thank you. Must have thank you at the end. Yes, <laughs> this thank you here will give you your mark for format. Okay, teacher, what if students suddenly put a thank you um, in the beginning of the sentence? Like, thank you, I will end my talk here. What if? Okay, there's, no, there's no problem with that because right. the idea is to end the talk. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Thank you here because here looks nicer, so I put it here. <laughs> as right? long as there is thank yeah, you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So, here I want to give some reminders all right, so mm -hmm. that you can uh, write a good essay for your director writing. The first reminder here would be, remember to finish director writing within 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, don't exceed the 45 minutes because when you go more than the 45 minutes, yeah. you are taking time from continuous writing. Yes. Uh, like mm -hmm. For me, continuous writing is a big job there waiting for you <laughs> and you need that one hour. True, teacher. Okay, don't take time from there. Another one would be, Underline the keywords in the instruction. Always uh, students are not underlining keywords. Uh, that will cause them to probably get the format wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, they may not get actually what they are supposed to write, what is the task. Yeah. So it's important to underline keywords. Okay? And get the format correct because format is either two or three marks. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Uh, sometimes uh, some students think that, oh, it's only two marks, it's not important. Yeah. No? It's okay. <laughs> But you probably need the two marks to get an A or True. the two marks to pass. Yes, that's so, right, teacher. <laughs> yes, every single mark is important here, all mm -hmm. right? Okay, next one, use all the points given. Don't say that, oh, 
I English is very good. I can score very high. I don't need to <laughs> use the 12 points. I just mm. write six points enough. Cannot. You must use all the points given because if you notice, the format and the points carry 15 marks. Yeah. 15 is nearly half of total. The total mark for director writing is 35. Mm -hmm. So. If you can just get the format and the content, you already have 15 marks in your hands. All right. Yes. Uh, language, we'll talk later because that is separate, 20 marks separate. All mm -hmm. right. So make sure you get the 15 marks. All right. Okay. And then, most importantly, write confidently. Mm -hmm. Don't go into the exam hall thinking that uh, I'm going to fail this paper <laughs> again. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we uh, have to be confident before we do anything. That's mm. true. Okay, so just be confident. Go into the hall and go through the question. Follow all this, and yes. you can write something. You can. Okay. Let's go on to continuous writing. Okay. Now, if you know continuous continuous writing, you're given one hour. Mm -hmm. Okay. What other things do should we know? Five questions are given. Choose and write one composition. You have one hour to write, and it's fifty marks. Mm, okay, 50 it's marks. fifty marks. All right. Now you have to remember all this. Okay. Now this is the SPM twenty nineteen paper. Uh, let's look at the questions. Write a composition of about 350 words on one of the following topics. Mm -hmm. Okay, can somebody read number one for me? Okay. Melissa. Yeah. If you had the chance to be someone else, who would you choose to be? Explain what would be good about being that person and what might be difficult. Okay, now this is a reflective type of essay where you put yourself in some other uh, place or some other... Uh, somebody else shoes or something like that. Okay, mm -hmm. so here, first thing you do is you always underline keywords. Okay, let's look at mm -hmm. this. Okay, to be someone else. And who is it? Who? Okay, what would be good about being that person? Mm -hmm. And what might be difficult? So mm -hmm. once you get this, then you won't go off track. Alright? Yeah. Okay, let's look at number two. Who can read for me number two? Okay, who wants to read? Okay, Shawin. Okay, Shawin. Modern inventions have made our lives much too complicated. Things used to be a lot simpler in the past. Okay. How far do you agree and explain why? Okay, mm -hmm. now this is an argumentative question. So, again, you underline your keywords. Okay, you're talking about modern inventions. Much too complicated. Mm -hmm. Simpler in the past. Okay, now, how far do you agree and explain why? When you see this, how far do you agree? You can agree to this statement. Yes, yes. this is true. Mm -hmm. Or you can disagree. disagree. You, okay. don't, you don't agree with the statement given. Or you can do both. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can write three, three paragraphs where you agree to the statement. Mm -hmm. Or uh, another three paragraphs where you disagree. And in the conclusion, mm -hmm. you sum up and say, actually, I agree, you know, mm -hmm. after you talk about both sides, all right? All right. Okay. Okay, teacher. So, we are now at question, we would like to know how to write for continuous writing, right? Yes. Okay. What if before that, we take a break first? Okay. All the students, are you agree? You guys want a break for five minutes? <laughs> okay, alright. Jadi pelajar di luar sana, uh, jom kita berehat dulu dan kita kembali selepas ini dalam Road to Success SPM 2020. Kembali lagi dalam Road to Success SPM 2020 bersama saya, Wani Carey. Baiklah anda semua sebelum kita mulakan sesi kita selepas ini, Wani nak ingatkan untuk sentiasa jaga SOP, sentiasa cuci tangan, pakai hand sanitizer, pakai pelitup muka dan sentiasa jaga jarak sekurang-kurangnya 1 meter. Alright, kita nak tanyalah all the students out there, semua yang di luar sana dan student yang di studio, all okay? Masih bersemangat ya? Okay, alright teacher, let's, let us proceed our lesson today. Okay, now let's go on to number three. Mm -hmm. Who can read this number three for me? Okay, who wants to read? 
Okay. Okay. okay, why don't we give other person chance lah. Iqbal dah banyak banyak kali dia cuba kan. Ha, mesti kat luar sana dah okay. Iqbal nak tengok orang lain pula lah. Okay, who wants to try? Anybody? Okay. I would like to try uh -huh. to try. Ah, okay, let me share. Okay. <laughs> Write about a story about two people who had an argument because one of them had lost the mobile phone. End your story with, and they both realized how foolish they had been. Okay, thank you. Now, this is a narrative. Now, the mm -hmm. wonderful thing about writing narrative is there's only one grammar part you need to remember. It's past tense. Mm -hmm. So, if you're somebody whose grammar is always a bit shaky, try to attempt writing a narrative because you just have to remember the past tense. The past tense. All yeah. right. Okay, let's go on. Number four. Okay. This one we ask. Okay. Das Vindren. Okay, Das Vindren. Which do you think is more important, money or health? Compare the two and decide if one is more important than the other. Keep your reasons. Okay, again, it's argumentative, money or health, compare the two, decide if one is more important than the other, and you must have reasons. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's look at number five, last one. Who can okay. read? Let us ask Iqbal to read. Okay, ah, okay Iqbal. Iqbal. Baca nombor lima, Iqbal. <laughs> Iqbal, please unmute your mic. Uh, Iqbal lupa dah. Ha? Iqbal nervous. <laughs> okay. I cannot see the question. Oh, Number. can you see? Can you see now? Okay, read. Okay, Iqbal, unmute your mic. Iqbal. Mic, mic. <laughs> I muted it again. Okay. okay. Write about the day you first met your best friend. Describe where you were and how you began talking to each other. Explain how your friendship has developed since that time. Okay. All right. Okay, I've underlined the keywords. Mm -hmm. Now, this is descriptive and descriptive, uh, just like narrative, is in past tense. Mm -hmm. So, you just have to remember one grammar there only. Okay, let's go on. Okay, now let's try to do a sample question, a narrative. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, who can read this? Okay, who wants to read? That's been read. Okay. Write a story about the most frightening experience you have had. Describe where you were and what happened. Explain why it was the most frightening experience. Okay, again, you have read the question. What must you do next? Yes. Melissa. Teacher, you must underline the keywords. Very good. Who can tell me what are the keywords? Uh, what are the keywords? Yes, who can tell me what mm -hmm. are the keywords? Okay, who wants to tell? Or maybe Melissa can tell. Okay, shall we? In? Okay. All right. A story. Then underline the most frightening experience where you were, what happened, what was the most frightening experience. Where you were, what happened, and why it was the most frightening experience. All so, right. So, that's the second thing you do. All right. Let's go on. Let's look at the first part of the question. Write about the most frightening experience you have had. Okay, what are you afraid of? Let me ask Dasmindran, what are you afraid of? Uh, yes, sir. I'm afraid of ghosts, teacher. Ghosts? Ghost. Okay, me too. <laughs> You're afraid of ghosts. Right, okay. How about you, Noshini? I'm afraid of ghosts too. You're okay. afraid of ghosts too? Everyone is afraid of the same thing, teacher. Ghosts. Let's try some <laughs> other student. Anybody else? Melissa. Yes. Melissa? I'm afraid of rats. 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 Okay. What about you, Wani? What are you afraid of? I am afraid of height. Sorry? Height. 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 Oh, Pigeon. height. Yes. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm afraid of grasshoppers. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> okay, teacher. Okay, grasshoppers. All right. Okay, For now. For animal, I'm afraid of lizard. Lizard, mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Now. We have identified something you're afraid of. So, who can give an a introduction? Anybody would like to try? Okay, Noshini. Yeah, Noshini. I have always been afraid of rats. They, they send a shiver down my spine. Okay, she said, I've always been afraid of rats. Mm -hmm. They send a shiver down my spine. Mm. Okay, let's see another version. Anybody can give another version? Okay, Melissa. I am afraid of rats. There are many rats near my house. 
Sometimes rats will enter my house. <laughs> okay, very yeah. simple, very mm. simple. Compared to the other one, was a bit more sophisticated. Mm. This one is simple. I'm afraid of rats. Yeah. Okay, there are many rats near my house. Mm -hmm. Okay, sometimes they enter into my house. Okay, that happens, mm -hmm. I think. Okay, very. Is that a true story, Melissa? Or you just create it? I just created it. <laughs> okay, luckily you just created it. Okay. Okay. Now let's go on to the second part of the question where it says describe where you were and what happened. Where and what? Where is referring to place mm -hmm. and what were you doing in that place? Mm -hmm. Okay, now what happened? How did you encounter the thing you were frightened of? And mm -hmm. then your story will proceed from there. Okay. okay, now let's come back to our rats. Who can continue the rat story from just now? Alright, who yeah. wants to continue? Dasindran. Okay, now which one do you want to continue? Which uh, the one which has, I have always been afraid of rats, teacher. Okay. Continue. Two weeks ago, the thing I dreaded the most happened to me when I was at a restaurant in my hometown. Mm -hmm. Okay. Two weeks ago, the thing I dreaded the most happened to me when I was in a restaurant in my hometown. Okay, mm -hmm. yes, Iqbal. Teacher, can I continue? Okay. Uh, a rat whizzed past me as I was gulping down a bowl of chendol. I screamed at the top of my lungs and stood on the chair. Okay. Mm -hmm. A rat whizzed past me as I was gulping down a bowl of chendol. Notice the vocabulary you use, the words. Yes. Uh, it seems to be a bit sophisticated. Mm -hmm. If you can't write like that, it's okay. Now let's look at another way of writing. Okay. Would like to continue the, the other rat story? Shall we? Okay. Last week, I was doing my homework at home. I saw a rat in my room. Okay. Last Can I week. Continue to talk? Okay. Uh, before you continue, last week I was doing my homework in my room. Okay. I saw a rat. All right. Entering my room. Okay. Somebody wanted to continue. Who was it? Yes. Me okay, Michelle. Melissa. Michelle. I was scared. Oh, Michelle. I ran to find my brother. I was scared. I ran to find my brother. You see. Short, simple sentences. Yeah. I'm sure you can write like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or you want to go for a bit more sophisticated, then you take the first version just now. Okay? Yeah. Third part of the question. Explain why it was the most frightening experience. Write two or three reasons. Anybody mm -hmm. would like to try this? Okay. okay no, no Shini. It was the most frightening experience because the rat actually chased me in the restaurant. At least it felt like it at that time. Okay, now why is it most frightening? Because the rat chased her. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's a very good reason, all right? Mm. Okay, what about the other rat story? Anybody wants to try? Okay, Maybe Melissa. Just... I was alone and scared. There was nobody in my house. The rat was still in my room. I did not know what to do. Okay, there mm. you go. So you have covered this part. Of yeah. course, if you just want to write down exactly what the student said, mm -hmm. it won't reach 350 words. You need to develop a bit more, add a bit more events in your story. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you can stick to simple or a bit more sophisticated. If you are writing sophisticated vocabulary and sentences, your language mark will be higher yeah okay basically teaching in continuous writing it's all about creativity in writing the creativity, story right true. Mm -hmm. the more creative you are the more interesting your story is okay yeah all right so interesting is a uh, uh, is important to get more marks yes okay. Mm -hmm. okay let's look at a sample for explain why it was the most frightening experience it was the most frightening experience i was Scared. I was alone. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, actually, I've taken this from the question. Yeah. And put it into a sentence. Just think back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, if you're not confident, you just do these kind of things. Okay, yes. you take it from the question and you have one correct sentence. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. And then you add a little bit more. Two simple sentences here. I was scared. I was alone. Mm -hmm. Covered the question already. Alright, yes, easy. Okay, now let's look at the second one. Uh, somebody can read this for me. Okay, someone. Das Vindran. Yes. Das Vindran. Yes, yes. This has been the most frightening experience in my life because I have never seen a ghost before. I was alone and I did not know what to do. I felt helpless and scared. 
I do not want to go through such an experience again. Okay, now you are a bit more confident. You feel like I can actually write more than this. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you can go for this version. Second one. Uh, it's mm-hmm. still simple. You have some long sentences, compound sentences. Very simply put. Okay. Now let's look at the third one. Who can read this? Okay, third one. Iqbal. Yeah, Iqbal. It was arguably the most frightening experience I have ever had. Encountering ghosts is not a norm in my life anyway. Seeing the shadow in the dark and being alone made me feel helpless and lost. Walking through the graveyard will never be an option again. Never ever. Okay, mm-hmm. so this story is about the ghost earlier. Yeah. Uh, ghost, uh. Okay, so here you notice, you write like this, it looks more sophisticated. Mm-hmm. You have better vocabulary here, for example, arguably, mm-hmm. uh, you are some good expression, not a norm, mm-hmm. okay, an option. So, you are actually spicing up, adding flavour to your essay. Yes. Use good words. Mm-hmm. If you know it, use mm-hmm. okay continuous writing is actually where you show off how good is your english yes okay, okay. all right okay now let's go on now here are some examples of good vocabulary mm-hmm. okay now you know the word angry more than angry very angry yes <laughs> so instead of saying very angry you can always say furious furious mm-hmm. okay so but if you're again, if you're comfortable with just writing very angry, go for it. Yeah. Uh, it's not to say that very angry is wrong. It's okay. Mm-hmm. But you want sophisticated style of writing, you use furious. Furious. Now, very beautiful, you can replace with gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay. I mean, uh, beautiful, you have been using this word from primary school. Yes. <laughs> okay. SPM, uh, your vocabulary has to be upgraded a bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. You don't try to... Go back to the primary school level of vocab. Yes, but if this is what you know, go ahead and use it. It's mm-hmm. okay. All right, gorgeous. Very scared. Terrified, Terrified or petrified. Okay. All right. Ran very fast. You're writing about the ghost. So you want mm-hmm. to say ran very fast. Fine, good. Or you can say ran helter skelter. Oh, okay. It's the same thing, same meaning. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, very cold. All right. It means freezing. Freezing. Okay, or you want to say shaking in fear, go ahead, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Or you can replace it, trembling or shaking like a leaf. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good Uh, vocab there, okay. Yes, for you to score a high mark, you need good vocabulary. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. I've come to reminder. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's look at the first reminder. Choose the type of essay you are familiar with. Always uh, go for something you know. Yeah. Okay. If you have always been practice, uh, practicing writing uh, narratives mm-hmm. or stories, then stick to it. Yeah. Don't on the day of the SPM, you open the question book, there is a story, uh, there's a question on story writing or narrative, and then you see the one on argumentative. Mm-hmm. Ah, I think I can do this. <laughs> ah, please don't do that. Okay? Yeah. Don't do last minute. <laughs> ah, ah, don't change last minute. Yeah. Okay. Do what you're always practicing mm-hmm. okay and the next one let's see use connectors or linkers to ensure a smooth flow to your essay now what is the function of using connectors and linkers in your essay writing there is a smooth flow mm. okay somebody who reads your essay will find it easier to read mm-hmm. when you have connectors and linkers there for example teacher okay for example the simple ones will be and but Mm-hmm. Therefore, okay. in addition, furthermore, furthermore, mm-hmm. okay. Now, okay. if you Google uh, connectors and linkers, mm-hmm. there is actually a list of uh, more sophisticated kind of connectors you can use. Okay, mm-hmm. Let's go on to reduce errors. Okay, now imagine you get back your trial paper yeah. from your teacher. And you see everywhere, it's like lipstick, red <laughs> everywhere, underlined, yeah. you know. And you go a bit dizzy already. So, you can try this, you know. Say, for example, for pronouns, mm-hmm. you just take your green ink pen mm-hmm. and circle all the errors for pronouns using the green ink pen. Okay. Okay, now, then you take another color, say purple. And you go circle all the errors in your essay mm-hmm. for singular and plural. 
All right. circle. And then any errors in connectors, you use a different colour. Mm -hmm. Same for articles. Articles is uh, uh, and the. Use the same method and also spelling. If you have spelling error, maybe use pink colour, ink or something. Okay. And then you see there, mostly what colour is appearing. Uh -huh. If it's pink colour, that means you need to work on your spelling. Spelling. Okay. All right. So that's one way of finding out actually where is your weakness in grammar. Mm -hmm. Instead of looking at everything there and going dizzy, <laughs> you do that. And you reduce errors. When you reduce errors, your essay looks clean. Yeah. Ah, mm -hmm. So it's nice to see. And of course, it will improve your marks. Yes. Okay. Uh, final one here. Uh, another one. Vocabulary, like I said just now. Use good vocabulary to increase quality, quality. to your essay. Mm -hmm. Now, focus on quality for your essay. Don't go focus on the length. Mm. You can actually write six, seven hundred words mm -hmm. and have a lot of mistakes there. Okay. Mistakes in terms of what, teacher? Usually it's grammar. Mm -hmm. And when you're writing such a long essay, you tend to repeat your ideas later. Mm. Uh, because you are sitting in the exam hall, you know, under exam <laughs> condition. Yes. Uh, you will be writing the same thing you wrote in paragraph 2 yeah. in paragraph 8. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I don't think you're going to go back and check, Hey, did I write this journal? Yeah. Uh, no. Without realising, teacher. Without realising the it. same thing. Uh, mm -hmm. So, go for quality. Mm -hmm. Quality here means good sentences, good vocabulary, less errors. Mm -hmm. Uh, try to put in some sophisticated words. Uh, if you want to put in idioms, mm -hmm. proverbs, go ahead. And mm -hmm. uh, that will add quality. Okay. okay. Last one. Use a variety of sentence types. Mm -hmm. You can use simple, compound, complex sentences. I'm sure the teachers would have covered all this. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're somebody, oh, I'm allergic to compound sentence <laughs> and complex sentence. Yeah. I can only write simple sentences. Why not? Mm -hmm. Because that's what you're comfortable with. You go for that. All right. All we want is you pass the test. True. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, is there any questions would you, you all would like to ask? Okay. Any questions from the students? No, Shini. Okay. I have a question, teacher. Ah. Okay. Is punctuation important in essay writing? Punctuation. Hmm. Okay. Now, uh, punctuation. A poor punctuation is always overlooked in essay writing. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, students don't really pay attention because it comes automatic. Mm -hmm. Are you yeah. okay? Start the sentence with a capital, <laughs> and then finish it off with a full stop. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what you have been learning from primary school and kindergarten. <laughs> yes. uh, okay, follow through. But actually, there are a lot more to that for essay writing. You need mm -hmm. to use comma. You can use a dash, a colon, so many things. So, mm -hmm. what's the function of the punctuation? It actually helps the reader to pause. There's effect. Mm -hmm. And so many things come in with punctuation. Punctuation. Yes. Pay mm -hmm. attention, a little bit attention to your punctuation. Sometimes you keep on writing. You notice that your that one sentence is about five lines. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I were to read a sentence which is five lines, you know, yeah. when am I going to pause and breathe? True. I mean, yes. old lady like me needs to pause somewhere and breathe, you know. I cannot yeah. like start and go on and on, you know, and the lines, you know, five lines of one sentence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you need to help the reader. Pausing would be a comma, you know, things like okay. that. Mm. Uh, so, punctuation is important. All right. Any other question? Okay, any more questions from Sharui? Ah, okay. Teacher, I have a doubt. Can we write about an accident as the most frightening experience? Okay, coming back to the most frightening experience, yes, you don't have to write about snakes and rats and things like that. You also can write an accident as the most frightening experience. Mm -hmm. If you're involved in an accident or somebody you love is involved in an accident, it could be the most frightening experience. Imagine yes. you're getting a call and you're on rushing to the hospital. It's frightening for you. You don't mm -hmm. know what is going to happen. Or you yourself are involved in the accident. Yeah. Also very good. Mm -hmm. You can also write about uh, going to the dentist for the first time. Mm -hmm. That is a frightening experience for some people <laughs> until today they can remember. All okay? right. You can also write about that. Mm -hmm. uh, what about uh, you can also write about you're scared of lightning and thunder. Mm -hmm. Also can. So how are you going to talk about lightning and thunder? You put it in a nice context. Mm -hmm. You went on a camping trip. 
All right. Okay, you went on a camping trip and uh, it's night and in the middle of the night, a storm arrived and mm -hmm. lightning and thunder everywhere and you're the type who are scared also, you know? <laughs> and you can yeah. write a good story there. Also. All right. Okay. okay, teacher. Okay, so now, teacher, we have come to an end. Yes. So, if maybe we we want to hear teacher's advice or wish for all SPM students out there and to your students also, teacher. Okay. Uh, what I want to say is, uh, before you enter the exam hall, just tell yourself, I can answer these questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, follow the SOP. SOP is the most popular word now. Yes. So, what is the SOP? Underline keywords, read question, underline keywords, check out your grammars, uh, that is our SOP. Right? SOP for students. Yes. <laughs> okay, yes. so you look at and be confident. Don't be, for, let's say you have failed your trial or you have never passed English, that's fine. You just go into the hall and mm -hmm. tell yourself, this is the one I'm going to pass. Yes. Okay, you can pass actually. All right. Thank you so much, Teacher Charlie, for spending your time and also sharing all your knowledge with all the students out there. And to all students from SMK Batu Unjo Klang, we have Sharwin, Iqbal, Melissa, Michelle, Das Bindran and Noshni. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I wish you all the best and get a good marks for English, okay? Make your parents and teacher proud of you, okay? Alright, jadi itulah dia untuk subjek Bahasa Inggeris Kertas satu hari ini dan Wani harap anda dapat mengambil segala input yang diberikan oleh Teacher Shirley dan Wani doakan yang terbaik untuk anda semua. Tapi jangan ke mana-mana kerana selepas ini Wani akan bersama dengan anda lagi untuk kita mengetahui lebih teknik menjawab Kertas Bahasa Inggeris 2. Kita jumpa selepas ini dalam Road to Success SPM 2020. Assalamualaikum kepada Anandaku Wan Izati Azwa binti Wan Abdul Aziz dan semua pelajar SMK Stosa Kampar Perak. Selamat maju jaya dan sukses selalu. Anda pasti boleh. Anggaplah cabaran pada kali ini adalah permulaan untuk anda lebih berjaya pada masa akan datang.